What's up everybody? In this video, we're gonna talk about DNS. DNS is the domain name system, also known as the domain name service. And what DNS does is it resolves host names to IP addresses. Um, without DNS, we wouldn't use the internet, and that's my theory. I don't think as many people would be on the internet if DNS did not exist. Yet, many people are not aware that DNS is a thing. DNS is uh, very important. DNS is also a big attack vector, meaning that uh, those bad guys out there and bad gals that are trying to hack into systems, they target DNS because they understand how important it is to the function of your internal networks and LANs and the, the wider internet. So conceptually, I want you to understand how DNS works. So somewhere, and this is typically in a business environment, there will be a local DNS server. So you can see right here. This is my DNS server locally on the network. And I'll show you how you're gonna be able to set up a DNS server on your local network in your lab if you would like. We'll do that later on in this course once we hit some of the projects. But for now, just understand that most medium-sized to large businesses, they're gonna have a DNS server locally on the network that all these clients over here end up uh, reaching out to to get a host name. And I promise I'm gonna explain what a host name is. Um, but in your home network, typically you'll notice, as you can see with, with mine, I'll show you when I open up command prompt, so feel free if you're in Windows to open up command prompt. If you're on Mac, go ahead and open up a terminal, or if you're in Linux, open up terminal and, and do IP config or IP add on terminal. And you'll notice that it does not show the DNS settings when we just do the traditional IP config. Remember, IP config all. So it's gonna show DNS, and I will show you what my DNS servers are as I'll change these. I typically use, not, I don't use the defaults. But what you're gonna see, what you see here is DNS address options being leased out to my computer from the DHCP server. Remember, in a previous video, we did discuss DHCP. So if that's something you're a little foggy on, go to the DHCP portion of this course or those two DHCP videos we covered and, uh, and, 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 and you'll see what I'm talking about. But ultimately, my router or a DHCP server on the network gave me an IP address, gave me a DNS server option so that when my computer tries to go out to the internet uh, and look up a website, it actually first, my computer has a resolver that will generate a DNS request that asks that server what the IP address is of this server, given this host name. So when I go out to a website uh, like you know google.com, and it, you know you've all seen Google, it will actually in the background resolve to a public IP address, which is how the computers are identifying each other on the network, right, and locating each other. So if we look back here at this, if we were to look in this topology, you can understand that these systems here, these, these computers are, are, they have a DNS option. And when they ask for google.com out on the internet, first thing they're gonna do, if there's one, if there's a DNS server locally and they have the IP address assigned, as I showed you, for the DNS option, they're gonna send that request here first. They're gonna say, hey, where's DN, where is google.com? And the server is going to say it might even have some cache, meaning it has a temporary memory place of uh, so that it, it can help get people and get requests there faster. But if not, it'll actually ask another tier of DNS servers. So I'm going to show you how to do this. And, and you don't need any equipment. You don't need any uh, anything but a computer that can run Packet Tracer to do this particular exercise. So go ahead and follow along. Open up Packet Tracer. I've already got it opened up. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and label it DNS. So all we really need in this one is let's 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 get I don't know one two, one or two PCs. So I'm gonna grab I'm gonna grab a PC 
and a server. And this server is going to solely be our DNS server. We're going to get a switch because remember, as a part of our networking devices, a switch is critical. We got to get that star topology going. So I'm going to connect these together, follow along as I do this. And I do, I don't edit this out so that you can actually follow along with me. Um, if, again, if you're not following exactly what I'm doing as I'm doing it, try to in the future, like after this video, uh, this initial run through, try to do it yourself because I promise you it will cement in your head. It will, it will be something that you can talk about just like this, right? Um, so, all right, we've got the DNS server. And what I'm going to also do, and I, I'm introducing a little bit of web server here, is I'm going to put a web server in here. We're just going to call it web server. I happen to know that in Packet Tracer, the web server is already enabled on these servers. So we're going to we're going to use uh, static IP addresses. Practice a little bit. So on this computer, I'm going to give it a 192.168.0.10. Let that autofill. Notice this field right here. This field is what Normally, DHCP will lease out the DNS server option. Um, and you can see that for yourself. If you want to set up DHCP to do this, feel free to do that as well. But I just want to show you this manually so you understand how important this is. Now, without a DNS server, I can still get to computers on a network, including computers on the internet. I can just use their IP address. But think about it. If everyone had to remember the IP address of their favorite website, they probably would not use the World Wide Web. They would not use the internet. It wouldn't be as popular as it is. Um, especially now that IPv6 is picking up some adoption um, and people are starting to move towards it more and more, they would, you know, it's a long address, I'm telling you. So it's, you're not gonna remember all those and you shouldn't, you know, we've been able to automate that with, with, the DN, with DNS. So for now, know that DNS server, that's a, that's a location. That's a spot you can go to. But um, I'm going to show you how you can actually navigate to a device on the network without DNS enabled. Oops. So 192.168.0, we'll make this 1.5. There's no rationale behind my IP addressing right now. I'm just trying to get the DNS concept out. So DNS server, leave it blank. I want to show you one thing about in, in Packet Tracer with the web server. Go to services, just like we did when we, when we did DHCP. Go to DNS. You notice you can make a DNS server. That's what we're going to do with that server below. But also notice with HTTP, and we'll do a whole thing on HTTP. But for now, quick little, quick little crash course here. HTTP is the hypertext transfer protocol. It transfers hypertext markup language. So think about it, hypertext transfer protocol and hypertext markup language. So HTML is the language of the web. HTTP is how it transports that language or those web pages. And then Packet Tracer, you'll notice up there that it's already turned on. So as soon as this has an IP address, we should be able to request a web page. And now, what do we use to request a web page? Think about it. I'll give you some time. Maybe even pause the video. We use a web browser. Remember, we I mentioned a couple of times in this series so far that there's always a client and there's always a server. So with a web, with a website, there's the web client, which is the browser, Chrome, Firefox, Brave, you name it, there's tons of them. And there's a web server, which is typically running on a stack of technologies called a web stack or a full stack. I'm sure you've heard of the full stack engineer. Uh, LAMP is a popular web stack, which is Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. So is uh, IIS, which is, or, or in other words, some people call it WIMP, which is Windows, IIS, MySQL, and PHP. But that's beside the point. We'll talk about that in a different video. For, for now, watch what we're gonna do. We're gonna open up the PC. We're gonna go 
click on IP configuration, and we're going to go to the actual web browser built into Packet Tracer. And this is not Internet Explorer. This is not Edge. This is not, you know, th but this is a bare bones simulation of a browser. So I'm going to click on this. And this is where you'll think, oh, okay, wait, hold on. This is kind of clicking, maybe, hopefully. Well, the URL is the Uniform Resource Locator. It's a way to locate resources, but you have to know the address of your resource. Typically, you will type in here the name, the domain name of the website, like a www.google.com or you know whatever site you go to. But you can also type in the IP address of a site and sometimes get there, especially if it's local. Think about this when, when, when we did this on the router in a previous video, we typed in the IP address of the default gateway, which is the IP address of the router on our network. And it took us to a web page that let us log in and configure our router. So here, I'm gonna show you how you can access the web server and it's the same exact way. You, you type the IP address of the server. So I, I think I picked five, right? Yep, yeah. so look, you see the, the web page came to my client from the server. So from the server up here, as soon as I generated that request, the server received and said, all right, I'm a web server. I can, I, I know what HTTP is. Here's, here's my, uh, here's my web page or my default web page. And, and then there it is. But here's the thing. We were able to do that by IP address. However, that's not scalable. We need to know how to do this by name. And this is where we get into really the bread, the bread of understanding DNS. So we're going to, we're going to make DNS a separate server. I am a fan of when you're building a network, when you're constructing an enterprise network, and we are starting to get into, I know this is practical networking fundamentals, so we're talking about the home network, but we're gonna inch our way towards the business world and understanding how this is working in the business because I want you to be able to use these skills to get a job or even do better at the job you're already in. So when we're looking at DNS, we have to understand that that exists somewhere in our network. So it's going to be a separate server. It should be a separate server. If it's a Windows environment, it's probably going to be on a domain controller, um, which is going to come later in this course too. Just know it's where it's the it's where all the users are stored on a big network. Um, but it also is the primary DNS server for the network. So uh, we're going to go to give this DNS server an IP address because remember anything that's connected to the network needs an IP address. That's just the protocol stack. So I'm going to give this one 192.168.0.3 tab and I am going to go to services. I'm going to go to DNS and I'm going to turn it on. But I'm, uh, here's where we're going to stop and I'm going to show you, we're going to talk a little bit about A records uh, and I'm going to show you how to set up an A record. So, um, what is an A record? An a, an a record is a name to address translation using IPv4. And we're using IPv4 in this course. I will do an IPv6 uh, after credits that'll help you understand IPv6. But in this case, the, the name is what we're going to pick for our website. Uh, and, and we'll talk about web DNS too, but know that a web, uh, a, a name would be like a www.insertheer.com or .net or .org. Here we, we, we're not going to the web, so we can pick a site. So I'm going to do www.pnf.com, short for Practical Network Fundamentals. So this is our goal is for anyone on this local network here in Packet Tracer, if they want to get to the website on the web server by name, they're gonna use www.pnf.com and it's gonna to map to an address. I wanna ask you, challenge, pause the video after I say this, is what, what address are we putting here? So I'll give you a chance, maybe comment below, uh, comment in the Discord, uh, pause it and think first, and then I'll give you the answer. So if you said, well, we're gonna put the IP address of our, D of our uh, web server here, then you're right. Because we want it to resolve to the web server. 
Now, I w- I, it would make sense immediately for you to say, well, it's going to be the IP address of the DNS server. But that's not true. The, because we're not trying to get to the DNS server. We're trying to get to the web server. Makes sense? This is why documentation can be important too. So go into address and we're going to do 192.168.0.3. Save it or add it and save it. We've just added a record. Oops. We just added a record here. You see above me that is www.pnf.com, which is the just a fictional site that I didn't make that. I don't own that domain. It's just practicalnetworkfundamentals.com. The A record is translating to an IP address, right? So it should take us to the IP address of the website, which will allow us to get the web page. There's an additional thing here you got to know. Do you remember at the be- towards the beginning of this video when we went to the IP configurations, there was a DNS server option in our IP address settings? I showed you that in Windows too. Well, go ahead and go there on Packet Tracer, and you want to make sure that your client, your, your PC, has a DNS server assigned. Otherwise, this won't work, and I'll demonstrate the not working element to this, but let's put it in here. Do 192.168.0.3, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open the browser and I'm going to go to that site. I'm going to go to it by name. I'm going to go open that browser, do www.pnf.com, enter. She took me to the site. Now watch this. I'm going to close. I'm going to close out of the browser and I'm going to remove the DNS server. I want, to watch, I want you to see what happens if this if this doesn't if the DNS server is down or the DNS server is not properly assigned. Like the, uh, you may see questions on a test or you may run into this in real life that tests your understanding of DNS because your network could be built just fine. Everything works, your traffic can get to the internet. You can ping it, but you can't get to the website. It could actually be a DNS issue. So watch this, I'll try it again. We'll go over to the browser here and we'll do www.pnf.com, host name unresolved. What happened? Well, we don't have a DNS address assigned, or you know, you could always, you know, the DNS server might be down too. So go back, we'll, we'll fill those settings back in. Oops, sorry about that. Go back in here, do 192.168.0.3, and go back to the browser. www.pnf.com and I'm getting there again. So I hope this helps you understand DNS. We're going to dive a little bit deeper into this in the next video. I'm going to show you some nifty commands that will help you to discover a DNS server on a network from scratch. Um, I'll see you in the next video.